Where are we most likely to find life in our solar system outside of Earth? Mars? Venus? or maybe even Europa, a moon of Jupiter. The more we study the moons of the gas giants, the more they surprise us, with Saturn's moons Enceladus and Titan turning out to look like pretty good candidates for finding life. Enceladus even has plumes, big geysers coming from its poles, suggesting there's a liquid water ocean beneath its icy crust. The Cassini mission to Saturn even flew through those plumes and found that the water contains the building blocks for life. And with that discovery, there's now a lot of moons that are thought to have this outer icy crust with a liquid water ocean underneath them. And one of those is Jupiter's moon Europa, which is why NASA have decided to send the Europa Clipper mission there to investigate. And it's set to launch very soon in October 2024, but won't arrive at the Jupiter system until 2030. Now its main mission while it's there is to figure out if Europa is habitable to life or not. And just to clarify, when I talk about life, we're talking about like very simple life, like single celled life, like bacteria, things like that, rather than saying, you know, is it habitable to humans? But still, that's why there's a lot of buzz around this mission. So in this video, we're gonna dive in and chat first about what Europa is like and why we think it has a liquid ocean. Second, why NASA picked Europa over Saturn's moon Enceladus, for example, for this mission. And finally, what experiments the Europa Clipper mission will do to test whether Europa really is a habitable world where life can survive. Now, you might not have heard of the Europa Clipper mission before, especially if you live outside of the US where it doesn't get as much coverage in the media. And also when you see things like this in the news that are talking about the habitability of planets like Mars, for example, or one of Jupiter or Saturn's moons, how do you know that that news is reliable? Take this story, for example, on how blasting glitter onto the surface of Mars could potentially make it more habitable for life. The headline makes it sound so sci-fi, but this news story is based on real scientific research. Thankfully, with ground news, I can see that this research had over 18 sources reporting on it from around the world, but the majority were outside of the UK. So I would have missed it with my usual news sources. Now, I've been working with today's partner, Ground News, for just over a year now. And what I love about their platform is how easy it is to see for a given story whether the majority of sources covering a story are considered highly factual or not. On top of that, it's incredibly useful for spotting any potential biases in reporting. So Ground News gives you this handy bias comparison tool to help compare how publications across the political spectrum reported on the study's findings. So I can really easily see how left-leaning publications tend to focus on the technical aspect of the nano no particle glitter method, whereas center-leaning publications tend to focus on the practical challenges and broader implications. Their app and website was founded by a former aerospace engineer who used to work on missions for NASA, so you know that their NASA and their space news coverage is going to be excellent, which means I'm able to discover stories that I otherwise would have missed, which is one of the main reasons I continue to use Ground News. So I'm delighted that Ground News continues to be a longtime supporter of me and my channel, especially because they are completely subscriber funded, so that allows them to stay free of all the potential biases that come with paid advertising online. So head to ground.news slash Dr. Becky or scan the QR code on the screen for 40% off their top tier unlimited access vantage plan to stay informed. So thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to chatting about the Europa Clipper mission. And let's start with what's Europa like and why do we think it has a liquid water ocean under its crust? So Europa is the sixth largest moon in the solar system after the other Galilean moons of Jupiter, Saturn's moon, Titan, and our own moon at just a few hundred kilometers or so smaller. It has the smoothest surface of any known object in the solar system. So if you think about Earth's surface, right, we've got these huge mountains and valleys and craters. Look at the moon too, right, that's absolutely pockmarked with craters. Whereas Europa's surface is very smooth. It has barely any crater impacts like all the other moons of the solar system, meaning Europa's surface is fairly new, right? It's young. It must have been renewed or replenished recently by something. The surface is also crisscrossed with a network of cracks, ridges, and patterns of what's known as chaos terrain on the icy crust. And the current best hypothesis to explain that is that the icy crust is floating on top of a subsurface ocean. Now add to that, the Hubble Space Telescope back in 2014 appeared to image what looked like plumes erupting from the surface of Europa, like what we saw on Enceladus. Now with Enceladus, we had Voyager and Cassini reporting on the plume's existence from very close up, whereas Hubble Space Telescope is in orbit around Earth, right? So the evidence is a bit weaker, but you can see at the seven o'clock position here in this image, there is 
possibly something there. And just for clarity's sake here, NASA have like superimposed on top the image of Europa from the Voyager probe when it flew by in the 80s, just to give you a sense of scale of these plumes. With that scale, you can then actually work out, okay, if these are plumes that the Hubble Space Telescope has detected, then how far do they actually rise above Europa's surface? You work it out, it's around about 160 kilometers or so. And the idea is that that is then falling back down onto the surface of Europa. That's what's renewing and replenishing the surface and keeping it looking so young. But it's not just this tentative plume detection that we have to support this idea that there's a liquid water ocean under Europa's crust. In the 90s, the Galileo spacecraft showed that Europa has a magnetic field. How do you get a magnetic field? Well, charged particles moving through Jupiter's much stronger magnetic field would definitely do it, suggesting that there is a conductive, salty liquid beneath the surface of Europa. And to top it all off, there's also the fact that Europa orbits Jupiter in a very squashed oval shape. Meaning that every three and a half days as Europa orbits Jupiter, it comes much closer to Jupiter, experiencing a much stronger pull due to gravity, and then moves further away again, lessening that pull due to gravity. Jupiter is so much bigger than Europa that its gravity is actually strong enough to deform Europa's shape as it does this. This constant flexing of its shape actually heats the interior of Europa, keeping anything that might be under the surface a liquid, like a liquid ocean. Now, all of this evidence that we have is technically indirect evidence. And the plumes detection is very tentative, unlike the ones that we have from Saturn's moon Enceladus. Which brings me to why NASA is sending this mission to Europa rather than Enceladus or any other moon. Well, there's a few reasons. The first being that we've been studying Europa for longer than we have Enceladus. So there's a much richer scientific knowledge base about Europa. And that means there's more questions that we know to ask because of it. So although we know Enceladus definitely has plumes and we've been able to do that direct sampling of the material in them with Cassini, there's actually more that we know we can learn by going to Europa. I'm sure we'd learn a lot by going to Enceladus, but quantifying what that actually is, like in a pitch to NASA to get them to actually fund a mission to one of these moons of a gas giant is much easier with Europa than it is with Enceladus. Plus there's also the obvious answer of Europa is much closer than Enceladus. And so a mission to Europa benefits from shorter travel times, less fuel requirements, just making it less of an ask in terms of budget and technologies. Essentially it's cheaper to go to Europa. Plus ESA, the European Space Agency is also sending JUICE to the Jupiter system to study the other moons of Jupiter. It's actually launched already, but won't arrive until 2031, a year or so after Europa Clipper. But it'll have different scientific instruments on board that will help complement what's on board Europa Clipper so we can just get a better understanding as a whole of the Jupiter system and the Galilean moons. So with all that said, what experiments will Europa Clipper do to actually test whether this is a habitable world or not? Well, let's start with what instruments it's got on board because there's 10 that help it to achieve its scientific goals. There's two cameras, one for visible light images to capture high resolution images of the surface and then an infrared camera, so like a thermal camera to work out like the temperature of the different regions. Perhaps if there's like a pocket that's warmer, closer to the surface and we can work out, okay, what temperature is it and is it a liquid or not? Then there's two instruments for probing the magnetic field around Jupiter. And these are going to work together to see how the magnetic field of Europa changes as it orbits Jupiter. This is also what NASA is going to use to confirm the existence of any liquid ocean under the surface of Europa, along with measuring its depth and its salinity and the thickness of the ice crust around Europa too. Then it has an instrument for measuring the strength of gravity that Europa experiences as it orbits Jupiter and how Europa's own gravitational field changes along that orbit around Jupiter, which should help reveal its interior structure and again confirm if there is is this subsurface ocean there. It's also got a radar detector. So radar is when you send out light waves, usually in radio wavelengths, to bounce off objects and time how long it takes to come back. So you can work out how far away they are. So with this, we can work out sort of like the surface elevations on Europa, like what the altitude of various different features are, but also the radar has been designed to be powerful enough to actually penetrate the icy surface. And again, confirm if there is a subsurface ocean there. Then it's got two spectrographs, which split the light into a rainbow to look for the 
traces that atoms and molecules leave on the light reflected off the surface of Europa so we can work out what it's made from. It's got one that does this in ultraviolet light, which is good for detecting signatures from gases like water vapor, for example, again, to confirm if there are plumes present. And one that does this in infrared, which is better at working out what the ices and salts on the surface of Europa are made from. Now, both of those are gonna do that from afar. But Europa Clipper also has two more spectrometers, which will do this with gases and particles collected from around Europa itself in a direct measurement of what's there. And this is gonna be crucial to work out if there are the building blocks for life present on Europa, especially if there are plumes that Europa Clipper can actually fly through and collect material from. So the good news is that together, all these instruments will give us a really good understanding of Europa and its potential to support life. With them, we can work out the thickness of the ice shell and what it's made of and what any liquid ocean under the surface is made of, if there is one, plus all the chemical reactions that are going on on Europa and the energy sources that come from both Jupiter and Europa itself, all of which are critical in working out if Europa is hosting life or not. So with the launch imminent in October 2024, with the three week launch window opening on the 10th, everyone is excited to see this mission finally launch towards the Jupiter system and Europa. The bad news is that we're gonna have to wait until the 2030s for Europa Clipper to actually make it to the Jupiter system and to Europa and finally get an answer to that question of whether Europa is hosting life. Oh, oh hello. The Mew came with a big leap. Okay. Oi! <laughs> you can stay there if you want. I'm sure everyone who's watching will be very amused by, oh, you want the ribbon and the ribbon stuck in the book. That's what you want, isn't it? Hang on a minute. Anyone else's cat obsessed with the like page marking ribbon? These are plumes that the Hubble Space Telescope has detected. They seem to be rising 100. What are you doing? <laughs> In the 90s, the Galileo spacecraft actually showed that Europa has a magnetic field. Yeah, play with this on the floor. It will make less noise. <laughs> yeah, you jump down. There we go. The thickness of the ice crust around Europa too. Well, at least you timed it right. I'm gonna start looking like a Bond villain in my videos here, Pip. If, uh... Hi, are you coming on my knee? Wow. Hello. Okay, you're gonna try and jump to the to the sofa. Okay, just mind the, ah, cause tripod, ah.